recently I got this iMac from late 2009 from a friend of mine. Its backlight is broken. While you can't see anything but a short flash right after the famous F-sharp chime, you can use a lamp to at least try to see what you're doing. I changed the HDD to a 500GB one from another iMac, but the HDD temperature sensor is not interchangeable between some iMac models, so the fans spin on high. All the time. I bit the bullet and set up the Mac with those fans on maximum. I even upgraded it. Twice. After installing Snow Leopard, I upgraded to El Capitan and it's running quite decent. Bearing in mind, this one is 11 years old. But the problem with the faulty backlight still remains. While I could and will use the mini display port to connect it to my curved monitor, it's kinda sad this thing is standing on my table and not showing any sign of life whatsoever. I could of course change the faulty backlight CCDLs or the inverter or whatever is responsible for this failure, but I want to give this old iMac a little design refresh with a see-through display. A new start after serving 11 years as a daily driver for my friend. First thing is of course to get in the inside of this Mac. For that I'm going to unplug the power cable. Mainly because the power supply in this Mac is uncovered and there's nothing funny about touching that. Not that I would know. No way I would have done such a stupid thing in the past. <sighs> Fuck. Anyway. Let's start with this RAM slot cover. It's just one Phillips screw. With this suction cups I can easily lift the front glass. This will reveal 12 torque screws. On the bottom, 4 longer ones, on the sides are the short ones. Now I can take off the outer shell after unplugging the microphone cable. Remove 8 Torx screws from the display panel and unplug all cables plugged in it and we're in. Let's set the iMac aside and focus on the panel. I need to get down to the display panel. For that I removed the two brackets holding the panel in place, unscrewing the display board and carefully folding that up. I remove the clips holding the cables for the light tubes and slightly bend all the little nooks open to get the backlight and display assembly out of the frame. With that disassembled, I can carefully remove the display and its board from the backlight part by carefully prying the display with some guitar picks and prying tools. The backlight is pressed in a black plastic frame. I need this one to assemble the display panel back to the iMac. In hindsight, I think I didn't have to remove the display from the black frame at all, but it reduced the possibility of scratching it while removing the backlight from the frame. I placed the display back on the plastic frame again and clipped it in place with the outer metal frame. After that I screwed the holding brackets back in place. I plugged the display port back onto the motherboard of the iMac and turned it on to see if everything still works. And it does. Now I removed the temperature sensor of the display. I want to place some LEDs behind the see-through screen, otherwise it would be too dark to see anything. There's actually another problem coming up with this, more on that later. For the LEDs I need to find a 12 volt power source inside the iMac. With the removing of the original backlighting I don't need the inverter board anymore and conveniently the upper pin is on 12 volt when the Mac is turned on. These connectors I use to connect the LEDs to its power source. I'm going to solder those on the 12 volt cable and for ground I'm using the metal frame of the Mac itself. The opposites of the connectors are soldered on the LEDs of course and after a quick test I taped the LEDs to the inside of the black frame.
After checking the LEDs again for any damage, I plugged in the display cable and checked the result. And yeah, I think this looks pretty darn good already. But here I come to the problem I was speaking of earlier. While you can't see anything near the LEDs, the image is not very good in front of dark areas, as you can see here with this finder window I'm dragging around. I tested it with a piece of paper and... It's just simply not wide enough. This is where my design idea with Plasti dip comes into play. I got the optical drive back in the Mac and taped up the parts that I don't want to spray. Up until this part that was all fun and games, but with the spraying of the inside of the Mac I need to put a little disclaimer here. Please don't try this at home, or at least don't blame me for it if your Mac goes up in flames. So this is only for your entertainment and you should not do that by any means. With that out of the way, let's do some stupid stuff. I used two coats, let it dry and got rid of all the tape. The display cable is wrapped in some cloth, so I don't think it would get wide enough for my liking, so I wrapped it in tape. If you have any better idea for that, please leave it in the comments, I might give this a revisit sometime. I taped the inner part of this fan, cause I really didn't want to get any of that sticky stuff in the ventilation system. Coming to an end of this project, the only thing left to do is placing the display temperature sensor and screwing every bit back in the iMac. With everything cleaned, set and done and the display board taped in white, let's just hope this thing doesn't blow up and have a look at the final result. I am absolutely blown away by this look. It's completely functional again and you can see and read from every portion of the display. The depth behind the contents of the screen is just amazing to look at. Don't get me wrong, the display is not as crisp as before with its backlight. But for a total cost of 22 euros, this thing got back its purpose. It's not just standing on my desk giving me sad looks from the side. This is the beginning of its new life as a second monitor. Even if it's just to manage my next Spotify playlist. If you like my content, please share this video, give a thumbs up, leave a comment and or subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thanks.